see me? Hello. Hi, hi. Sorry, I thought you was the audio then. Sorry, mate. Yeah, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Thanks. How are you? Should oh, I be fine, like man, this yeah. instead? Oh, that's better. Yeah, yeah. That's better. Yeah, yeah. So where were you at? You you in Iceland or you in Europe? Uh, sorry, in UK or whatever. No, I'm in Reykjavik, ah, okay. Iceland. Nice, nice day yeah. there. Or um, yeah, in our in our standard, it's good. It's like 12, 13 degrees and not raining and no wind. So that's uh, that's decent, I would say. Oh yeah, it's raining here, but it's quite mild. So it's about fifteen Celsius, but it's really raining. So yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we. We, we, you got the, you know, what do you say? You got the short end of the stick there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I really enjoyed the film. Um, it's, okay. It's, I, I've never laughed so much in a while. Um, I know it's, it's yeah. got everything going on. It's quick witted. You know, you can watch it three times and then you may have missed something because there's so much humor in there, which, you know, I, and, and obviously stereotypical stuff. And so how did you come about writing it then? Because I know you co-wrote it and did the, and the screen, co-wrote the screenplay as well. So how did you come about writing something like this with the other, with the other guys? You know, I was backed up with um, a, a group of very talented uh, comedians. So I'm not going to take uh, the whole credit by myself. Um, the, the the idea is now eleven years old because okay. we uh, the the lead character in the movie um, he and the, the curly haired, haired uh, partner he has in the beginning of the movie they are a very well known co co com com comedy duo in Iceland and they had this show um, a Friday show uh, ten years ago which was called called by their names the and Sveppi and. Um, they decided one one evening to have a trailer competition. So they uh, called, you know, each of their friends. Uh, Eden called me, and uh, Sverre called another guy who had he had made movies with, mm. and we made these these um, spoof trailers. And ours was about this over the top super cop who was in denial about his uh, sexuality, and we felt it was a fresh idea. Um, and you know, we, we thought we thought it had lots of potential for um, you know to to become a fun movie in Iceland because Iceland is a place where you you cannot make action movies; they are going to be ridiculous. You have you know the, the police the, the police doesn't carry guns. We, we nobody speaks in one-liners. We obviously don't have any supervillains. So so you know all these elements are are very fun to see in an icelandic environment where you would never usually see them you know without being ridiculous so we just felt okay if we go for this if we make a comedy with all these elements we're going to we're going to have you know everything is going to be allowed we can do whatever we feel like you know doing and some seeing things that we haven't seen in icelandic movies before and it's a, the, we have a great excuse it's all you know, it's all just a joke. So we can go as big and uh, grand as we want or try to go. And then we are, we have, you know, all these layers of things that are going to work. It's going to be fun to watch. You have, you know, you have these one liners. We have some funny people writing the movie. So I, I, we just thought it worked in many, many areas. So, and, and once we, once we aired that trailer, uh, it became quite popular back in the day. And, and, we have these two movie kind of complexes uh, in our country and both of them called us and asked us to write the full feature and we, we spent the summer writing it, me and the two main characters. And then when I became a professional football player two years later, we had to shelf the project and a few people tried to make it while I was away and it always fell flat and, and I thought it was never going to happen. But then 2019, I, I decided to um to move back to iceland and continue playing football here and then i i got the opportunity to like meet the guys more and and to see if we could bring life to the project ah oh, right okay so, that so makes when, sense. when i when, when i moved away 2013 we had written like a first draft or yeah. or it was a very flawed first draft we had and that just laid on the shelf for six years until i came back ah so it wasn't worked on over them six years it was actually just shelved completely yeah, some uh, there were some tries to, you know, revive it without me. Some people, you know, they, they had my permission to just go for it and see if they could make it. I didn't want to stop that. 
but um, I don't think they worked on the the screenplay. It was just on the shelf. They just used this first draft, which was, as I say, not very good. And then when I com- came back, we started talking about should we go for this? Is this still like uh, relevant or fresh? And uh, we we hadn't seen that character, you know, in the, the in these ten years, you know, we hadn't seen that idea pop up. Mm, so and and they were still popular enough, the guys, to to try to go for it. They have they have Iceland's most um, popular radio show every Friday, and they have a big like. Uh, fan group so yeah. we decided yeah let's go for it and i'm glad they didn't sort of do it without your your participation then and did shall we for that long i'm glad because the end product is amazing you know thank you so much i'm glad too um i i had completely like written this off i didn't think this was ever going to happen both because you know it's hard to make movies and uh, it was just one of the, those things mm-hmm. that had momentum for a while and then it was i just th- thought this had killed it yeah. and then and then I didn't think those guys, I mean, they are 40 now and they were thirsty when we were thinking about it. I just thought they would be like uh, out of out of uh, fashion or, or, or not like on, you know, on top of their game anymore. But once yeah. I came back, they were more popular than ever. So, so um, yeah, and they, it, kept, it makes... they, they kept themselves fresh somehow. I don't know how. <laughs> It may, it's interesting that you said that you was written maybe ten more than ten years ago originally because obviously with the characters you know one guy's hiding his sexuality Bossy Bossy's character and then obviously with her door is that the right way to say her door her door no you say her door oh, sorry her, 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 her. Yeah, it has this special Icelandic sound her door her. it's like the, the. the when when you say the. the yeah the that's the same sound so you have her door her door. Okay, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. My ass, I look this shit. <laughs> uh, close enough. Well, it's it's good that because obviously you was that was that still the storyline back then? Then that there was going to be a guy who was a boss's character who was going to come out as <laughs> gay eventually, or and then with her door, her character being the pansexual because obviously that's quite a newish thing that's been around the last like four or five years yeah. of people coming out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yes, it was always the it was the um, the idea with the main character to have him, you know, being in the closet and and fighting his you know his own prejudice and his kind of uh, stereotypical ideas of his role in society, you know, where it was just him, you know, holding himself back. Um, uh, but I, I was always struggling with what are we, what are we going to do with the other other character? How is he? I mean, I don't want to have them both having the same problems. Uh, is he like openly gay, or is he? It was when this idea came that he was pansexual yeah. that I just felt like, okay, that, that's it. You know, he is like he's so comfortable in his own skin. He just goes with the flow and does you know does whatever he wants. And um, so, so there was never. I, I didn't want that to be like a big issue. It was just going to be something that we didn't pay too much attention to uh, because the other story was the kind of coming out story and the drama of the, of the movie. Um, so I thought that was something that clicked. I'm not sure if it happened in the later process or, or if it was in the original screenplay. Mm. But but back in the day, like 11 years ago, I, I can admit that we were looking at this more as a uh, <laughs> comedic you know aspect like this this uh, coming out story uh, you like a super copy with because it has it has lots of comedic uh, elements and it's easy to play around with it you know having these you know much super macho man talking about feelings in the middle of you know gunfights it it, it makes you smile you know yeah, yeah. and you can you can take it further and i remember thinking back in the day when why haven't I seen this before? Why ha- why haven't I seen this in Little Britain or something like that? Because it's it, it feels like a very typical character for them to take on, like a like a closeted gay who is like a super cop, you know? Yeah, I know. What you but mean. Uh, yeah, but then uh, that was that was back then, you know. And and then some of these things made us smile back then, and we were not thinking that deeply about it. But once we started developing the story, and especially now. When we started again in 2019 and the times have changed, then we, we took up the old script and, and we almost threw it away because it was, you know, okay. da- dated 
and we we decided that this is <clears throat> a very sensitive subject and it's something that we have to do right and we we try to treat it with as much respect as we could you know that this is the drama of the character this is him in you know today's society kind of just uh, holding on to some old ideas and, and not wanting to let go and and um, so we try to treat this as a, both a love story and you know uh, you know uh, at the to give to make this the heart and soul of the movie you yes. know and and even though we have some calm comedic uh, moments I don't think we are treating it as like a joke like a, like a gay joke or something like that. Uh, that, that was that was definitely our intention to to try to make this the drama and the heart and soul of the story because it's so silly. Like the that. whole movie is so yeah, the whole movie is so silly uh, that you need something like you need some moments of you know drama or realness to to, to give it. So it's not going to be like a, a series of comedy sketches, you know. I understand, and it comes across like that. It's you know, it's 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 just justice. It doesn't take the piss too much, you know, about anything in general. You know, it just makes it light hearted. But I also have to say, when you said about the gunfight, when Bush is getting to her, though, he's like, "I love you," but he's still shooting people. And then he just, <laughs> and, they have to, and that just made me smile. Like it's just that's their normal job, but their feelings are still, you know, they control the job, but their feelings are trying to get out as well. So I just thought it was genius. That was that was genius. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I always loved that idea. Uh, I come back to it a little bit later when uh, when he says, you know, you, to Ricky, he's still he Ricky is still like teasing him with his old uh, silly gay jokes, and he's like, and he says that when he has his finger in his in his uh, wound, like, you know, your shitty comments don't hurt me anymore. I've come to terms with it, like in the middle of a very intense fight with the, with the villain, like still talking about his feelings. It's yeah, it's just it, yeah. such a fun fun mix, you know. <laughs> It is. You must have had so much fun then when you're writing this. I know you, like I said, you've, you've had different drafts over the years, but this, the final draft, you must have been such a, must have had so much fun just even doing the draft for the for the script at the end, the last, mm-hmm. you know, the last draft. You must have had so much fun doing that. And the whole process was just fun. I mean, from writing it uh, to developing it and to shooting it, and mm-hmm. it had some energy. You know, it's a low budget movie, and we are trying to make it look. Ten times bigger than um, other, or at least in, in a world where everything's everything is bigger and more exaggerated than in other Icelandic movies you had seen. So I think in many ways we succeeded. In, in some cases, you're, you're going to feel that you know we ran out of budget. But I think in in general we were trying to extract much more out of the movie than we could afford, and th- that's when the fun and the kind of fresh aspect kicked in because you could feel that everybody involved. Just loved doing it, and yeah. um, the crew loved doing some things they were not used to. And actually, you know, you just you could just play around and and you know do whatever, and it's all it's all just good fun. Um, you, you didn't have to be like realistic and stuff like that. So people just loved making it, and and I got such so many like fantastic comments from crew members who said like one 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 guy said that he was close to. A burnout and he hasn't enjoyed his work for many many years when this has like revived his love of filmmaking you know oh, the wow. process of making this and something like that you know and, and there, there are so many talented and fun and funny people you know working around uh, especially in front of the camera also behind it and and when you have so many people having fun you know even though it was super tough and and that's another thing i mean it was extremely difficult for for me and for everybody you know who were like deep into it but what got us through it was how fun it was and you, you couldn't really tell I me mean, i thought that it didn't seem like it was low budget I, it, it, for me i mean it's brilliant it, it really is and the cinematography is great the acting is fantastic i can't pick four with any of the actors in it I, I, everybody all of them you know they all seem to up their well they've up the game anyway i don't know what they did be, well <laughs> beforehand but it's like everyone i even the mayor i mean the mayor is probably my one of my favorites you know the, he's just hilarious is, is he a comedian <laughs> in real life or is he just an actor yeah that's a that's a good question because uh, you, i have an interesting answer yeah. actually here's the he is the prime minister in the movie, and you're pointing out that. Uh, oh, the prime minister. Cancel- I apologize, prime minister. Sorry. Uh, okay, I thought you didn't get catch, catch that because it always irritates me when I watch the movie with subtitles that this is not like 
um, this is not uh, established enough that he is the prime minister because that's a big joke actually right. because this guy uh, this guy is one of the few in the movie who is playing themselves you know that where the worlds are colliding you know our real our real world and this cop secret world and this guy is uh, maybe or probably the, the the most famous comedian in Iceland like of all time and in a strange ridiculous election a few years ago i think 2010 he became the mayor of Reykjavik <laughs> he had like there was like people were tired of the politicians and he he um, called in a bunch of his friends from like uh, you know actors singers and they had this uh, party of of um, uh, artists Yes, and they just crushed the the uh, the vote, the vote, and he became the mayor of Reykjavik for four years. And back then it was, I mean, it was like I think it was in the world, the world news, and it was very fresh. Now, I mean, Zelensky has has done it, and and now it's almost becoming a thing uh, for actors to do that. So it's not as original anymore. But back then it was like definitely the first time something like that had happened. And in our movie. And this is many years ago when he was the mayor, but in our movie, he is like uh, still that guy, but he has, you know, taken one step up, step up and now he's the prime minister. So Maybe he is playing. Sub, he's playing himself, basically. That he was the mayor. But I think I'm sure when I watched the subtitle, he did, it was saying mayor, but maybe I'll just I'll watch it again. But yeah, so he was the prime minister in the film, but he was the mayor in real life. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. All right, but so he wouldn't he, be so like that. So we're... <laughs> No, but and we are using his real name and stuff like that. He yes. and the radio host, he is also playing himself. He he was a well-known uh, '90s radio host. Yeah. So and he has this very iconic name, you know, like a last name which nobody else has. And uh, the way Ricky Ferrari says it, uh, only the way he says things, you know, with his accent, is like a local joke that nobody will get unless you're Icelandic, because he is like saying them all wrong or, or, or translating them, you know, he's saying yes. Eastman, Eastman, Eastman. East means like uh, East, you know, and, and you know, he's like translating the name somehow. And, you know, when you have this iconic name, people just laugh when he says Eastman, 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 because it's the wrong way of saying it, you know. But that's a very well-known guy from the Icelandic uh, pop culture 90s kind of world. And and Ricky has this one liner before he shoots him in the head, which is very related to his old life as a, you know, the film is full with these kind of local jokes, and that's why we are so surprised that people seem to connect with it outside of Iceland because our only um, goal was was just to make a movie which was as fun as possible for the Icelandic moviegoers. Really? We never once thought this would be you know, viewed by anyone outside of Iceland. And that's why every film festival we go to or every time we get a, a positive review, we are like pinching ourselves and like, how did that happen? Because we are just completely, it was, it was a non-issue to, to, you know, make it for somebody outside of Iceland. So, and Icelandic people have asked me, I mean, how, how do people like it outside? Because there are so many things that, you know, you're not going to get. Yeah, which was I didn't, obviously, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, and I, I try to explain this uh, during the Q and A's, you know, on the film festivals, because usually I am I am asked, you know, what what are the jokes that are, you know, you're not going to get. And some of you asked one question. I mean, the mayor like playing himself is one. Yeah. There's radio host, you know, all sorts of small small things like the way Ricky speaks, you know, the wrong Icelandic, or, and. Um, uh, when when Bush says uh, there's, uh, to the to the guy in the at the gas station, he says this, uh, he says you were good on TV yesterday, and he says TV. Do you, do you guys have TVs uh, in this part of town? And it's like it's like this part of town is like a, a, a very big slum, you know, in that. But that's like nobody uh, in Reykjavik everything is the same but this this part has like a slightly like a uh, reputation yeah. of being a little bit like more see but, but for him to say that, does people have TVs in this part of town like they are like some kind of uh, you know no. <laughs> a slum somewhere back in uh, I don't know 100 years ago or something 
So yeah. all sorts of small things like that are, and the jurisdiction joke in the beginning, obviously there's no jurisdiction between any, like it's Mexico and, and America or something like that. It's just two towns lying next to each other. Feels like the same town. So yeah, all sorts of things like that. I, I did I did catch up on on the on the jurisdiction one, but I didn't know about all the other ones. I need to watch it again, which I will watch it again because I really did enjoy okay. it. Um, just <laughs> just a couple more. Um, obviously you did you were a football goalkeeper. Um, but before you went professional, which was you did you've been playing it when you were a kid and then later on, but then you went worked in, in the film industry or music or the TV mm -hmm. industry before you went pro football, didn't you? So that's why so it's yeah. not like you've got left football to do this, you sort of did football, then went into the film, sort of editing, making trails, whatever, um, adverts, and then you went pro and then came yeah. back to this after, didn't you? Exactly, yeah. I had I have a very unusual football career. And, um, you know, my teammates in the national team, most of them, they, they went through the normal process of being good when they were young, uh, going out abroad around 16 to some academies. And then they were already playing professional football at maybe 21 or something yeah and um, uh, myself i was a decent goalkeeper when i was young but um at 14 i got injured i, I dislocated my shoulder uh, on a snowboarding accident and for five years because it kept dislocating i didn't play any football so at 20 years old i started again you know i, I tried to i decided to give it one last go and i started at the bottom of the icelandic league system like in the third division which is probably the lowest you're gonna you're gonna you know, know you it's probably as low as it gets in the world of football you know a lower league and I, so uh, playing as a national team goalkeeper uh, was it was not something that you know, felt realistic. I, I never thought that was happen, what was going to happen, let alone playing as a national team goalkeeper during the, like the golden era when we had the best team we had ever had and going to the World Cup and the Euros and going and playing as a professional footballer. It was something I never expected to do. But I was playing football in the third division uh, when I graduated from uh, high school and I had been doing lots of short films and stuff like that in high school. So I... I got a job in the film industry and I started making music videos and cheap commercials around 20. And, and, and I had my, my, sm my small production companies, you know, just started developing and rolling and I kept getting jobs and I kept, you know, climbing the ladder in the film industry wh while I was climbing the ladder in the football as well. And the Icelandic league is like semi-professional. Uh, so, and things started going really well in the football and, and the film industry actually also. I was a popular commercial director, you know, all this time between 20 and, and 29. So when I finally got the chance to become a professional footballer at 29, I had already like, I had worked as a commercial director for nine years and I had a lot, lots of experience as a filmmaker and I also had lots of experience as a football player having played two years as the national, as the Iceland's number one and, and with Iceland's biggest team. So it was all getting quite hectic and too much. And I, I welcomed the opportunity to, to be able to focus on one thing, not two. And at the same time, I was having my first baby. I don't think I could do all these things today with three kids, you know. Back then I had no kids and I could like just really, you know, dive into these two things. Not, and, but I, yeah, I, I was, uh, I was, uh, an experienced filmmaker uh, and I just gave it some time off. I did two commercials while I was a professional. One, probably my best one before the World Cup, it was Coca-Cola commercial, yes. which I was able to do uh, with, lot, you know, people just worked around my schedule. When I came to Iceland, we had one or two shooting days. When the national team came together, we had like a half a shooting day. And then three days before the World Cup, I had like three, three shooting days lined up. And then I was editing the commercial like all the way leading up to the, the first game. So we managed to somehow puzzle that. I, I knew it was going to be a big thing because we were going to the World Cup and the goalkeeper was a filmmaker and all that stuff. So I just thought, no, we have to, we have to use this opportunity of, of doing something because I know that this is a very unique situation which people find interesting, you know? Yeah. And being in the World Cup as well in 2018, I mean, that, that's mm -hmm. like every boy's dream you know i mean for you to be and then also playing against argentina argentina 
you know, yeah. in the World Cup and then saving the goal against Messi, the penalty kick. I mean, you know, you, you couldn't make that shit up, could you? If you were like, you you know. That's the thing, you know. Um, I, I, I'm always being asked about film, football comparisons, all that stuff. And, and that movie, that my story, even though I say so myself, you know, being like a chubby video nerd, you know, back in high school, who somehow ends up saving a penalty from the best football player in the world in the first game his tiny country is playing in the World Cup. It's it's like a climax of a movie which would never fly because it's just too uh, corny and and yeah. ridiculous. So I think, but it's it feels exactly like a, an ending of a bad sports movie, you know. Yes. And and so I think it is it is unbelievable. I, I just got reminded of it two days ago from FIFA, uh, the World Cup. They were just posted some things on Twitter and Instagram from that moment. And, and I think they used almost ex- the sec- exact words you were saying. I mean, saying that this was, you know, the stuff that dreams are made of. And that's exactly true. I mean, you couldn't think of a better moment uh, for a goalkeeper. I mean, ever. It's... Uh, it's like you need, and it's like a one in a million uh, thing. Uh, you know, the chance of this happening is so so tiny that I'm just so lucky that it that it happened, and uh, it really changed my life. And it's now the moment that everybody remembers. And yeah, so so it it it's um, it was a huge huge deal. Did you get did you get Messi's shirt then at the end of the game? Or, or that would have been something you know you could be your auction in the future for charity. You know, you, you shame you didn't. Mm-hmm. Get it. I suppose you didn't get it, did you? So, um, you know, I had this I had this working rule uh, that I usually didn't ask players for uh, their shirts, with one exception, and that was when I played against a legendary goalkeeper, and he was wearing shirt number one. And it was a game that I wanted to remember, and so I have I have five I have five shirts, and they're all from legendary goalkeepers from big games. And Messi, unfortunately, isn't a, a legendary goalkeeper, so I didn't ask for a shirt. Maybe I should have made an exception on that one. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I have this wall in my home now with these five shirts, like uh, in a frame. Wow, and wow. Uh, I can I can send it to you if you, if you think it's interesting. I don't know if you wanna. How how is how is your uh, platform? Is it like, is it like uh, online or? Yeah yeah yeah. So we we got it's in print and then we got online as well. So yeah, um, so mm-hmm. yeah, you can send me if you want to. Yeah, I don't mind. I can put a picture on there. It'd be quite nice actually. So yeah, I think it maybe it might elevate the, the the whole thing. Yeah. So um, I was going to ask you, are you are you going to make a film? Then you could make a sort of a comedy type serious drama about your career. You know from beginning, humble beginnings to where you are now, even though, but they had like a comedic twist to it and get the same guys involved that wrote, you know, cop mm-hmm. secret. I don't think I, uh, okay. You know, I always answered this question about my career and all that, that I cannot make that movie myself. If somebody wants to, I can help, but I cannot make it. But okay. Now there's a new idea. And, uh, you know, because I, I moved, I moved to Azerbaijan for one year. And then I had this of a Karak, whole, yeah, a Karabakh, yeah. And I had this, I I experienced this unbelievable uh, situation back there, yeah. which is like a whole movie by itself. And I'm interested in writing that one. It's like a farce um, okay. <laughs> where a, where a guy it starts with somebody like saving a penalty from from pen, uh, no a penalty from Messi or, or or scoring a goal in the World Cup and going to. Azerbaijan, and then experiencing all those things I, I did, I think it would make an entertaining movie. So that one, I, I'm actually, I'm actually, it, it's in my, it's on my radar, you know, to okay. make, to, uh, maybe going to pull that out once. But I don't think I'm going to make like a movie about my, you know, journey because it's just, it just feels a bit strange. But if somebody's interested, then I will help. Yeah, yeah. And are we going to see um, a cop secret too? Because I just thought this one was brilliant with them. The the partnership, how it gels at all. The partnership in in, in love and partnership in work. It, mm-hmm. it, it's got. I mean, have you got a second film maybe due that you're going to be going to production, or is it something you're going to maybe just not bother with? Or um, I'm I'm working on another movie now, which is not okay. a cop secret movie. Uh, it's a very exciting one. It also involves football and uh, is. Uh, uh, it's uh, 
powerful, energetic. It takes place uh, in Iceland and Denmark, and uh, it's a bit more like reality based, but still, you know, fun and and. But we we are always talking about what we're going to do with the Cuff Secret world. If we are going to spin it off to TV or make a, make a, a sequel, and I have a I have a very um, I have a, an, an ambitious idea for it. I have this whole uh, thing mapped out where we where we go to some fresh uh, you know directions with it. It would it would be both TV shows and another movie and I think it's, it would be like a fun collage and I hope we're going to be able to do that. It's difficult in Iceland with, with you know, TV that, 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 doesn't, that doesn't travel okay. because it's difficult to fund, you know, only local TV shows, uh, but we are trying to find solutions to do it. Maybe something like the, the Netflix, Amazon Prime, <clears throat> something like them can put money into it, you know? I mean, that, that sounds very good, but I don't think they would be interested in like a local... Uh, Icelandic comedy show, but you never know. We are we are looking into ways for for making it happen. Well, fingers crossed. You do develop more in the cop secret world because it was just funny. I, I loved it, man. Honestly, I did. I really did. It made me yeah. laugh quite out loud, quite a lot. Um, yeah, it's just That's so fun to hear. It is funny. It was. Fun. I'll watch it again anyway. So it was just in case I missed any of the jokes. Until you tell you've told me a few things as well. So I'm going to check them out. Yeah. As well, so, yeah. And get okay. Them. But thanks, Anna. It's honestly it's been a joy talking to you, man. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, same to you. And thanks for all the compliments. And it was uh, it was a nice chat. Yeah. And, and do I have your go. Do I have your email somewhere? No, um, no, because I think it was PR, wasn't it? I, I, I can give it you now if you want me to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's. All right, thank you for the chat. It was nice. Yeah, no, I really enjoyed that, man. Honestly, thank you. Um, and, okay. and yeah, it's good to see you know speak to a footballer that has got something you know that they well they're both in the love of football, but they've had two careers in tandem. You know, they've been so good at both of them, and now you've sort of obviously the football's given up, but obviously now you're going to develop mm-hmm. even more and better and better in the film industry. So, and you will do. Yeah, so. I hope so. Hope you so. will. You will, man. Honestly, you will. <laughs> honestly. I really enjoyed it. So yeah, I, I, enough plaudits from me, but no, it was a great film. So thank you, thank you so much. All right, well, you take care. I'll speak okay. to you soon. Yeah. All right, man. Cheers. Take care. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.